Welcome to this short lecture on breath sounds. Today we'll be focusing on the abnormal breath sounds. There are four in, in total that we'll be focusing on. There are the wheezing, the strider, the crackles and the plural friction rub. So within each one of these, the, the take home or the learning outcomes that I want you to know are firstly, what are, what's the definition of these abnormal breath sounds? What are their main mechanisms? And what diseases or conditions can cause them? Also, I will include a short audio example so you can hear what they should sound like. So starting with this picture on the board, so what we can, well, what you can hopefully get from this is we've got the tr trachea. I haven't drawn the larynx and anything above, but we've got the trachea coming down into the bronchial tree, and then you can see here the lung fields. Also, we've got an insert here which you can see the terminal bronchioles into the alveoli. Now, I'm not going to talk too much on how to take, how to auscultate the chest and hear the normal sounds, but essentially the two main normal breath sounds that you should hear are the bronchial sounds, which is more associated with the bronchial tree, and you're going to be hearing over this area of the lung, and the vesicular sounds, which vesicular essentially meaning more to the alveoli, and this is the broader area of the lung. And so I'm not going to go into what they normally would sound like because that is more a clinical uh, lecture. Now for today, we're going to focus on the four abnormal types. So the first two, wheezing and strider, are what we call musical breath sounds. Starting with wheezing, so wheezing is essentially a continuous high-pitched sound. Now it can be heard on expiration, inspiration, or both, but more commonly with expiration. So it is high-pitched and it is continuous. So let's have a listen to the audio of what a wheezing may sound like. More common in expiration than inspiration. So why is that the case? Well, wheezing is essentially indicative with an obstruction. So when you breathe in, as the air is moving down through here, the smaller airways actually get bigger in inspiration and the larger airways actually slightly narrow. And in reverse, when you exhale, the smaller airways get smaller and the bigger airways get bigger. And that allows the movement of the pressures and the flow of air. So if you think about that, if you have an obstruction, when you breathe out and the smaller airways become smaller, therefore there's a greater likelihood of hearing that sound of movement across it. So that's why wheezing on expiration is more common because the smaller airways become narrowed. Now when you compare that to inspiration, the bigger airways, they will narrow slightly, but they're still quite large. So it's less likely to, with an obstruction to hear a wheezing sound or a whistling sound, but it's still possible. But that would be suggestive if you do hear in inspiration, if you, do, if you do hear a wheezing on inspiration, that would suggest it's probably a more severe obstruction. So how does it come about? What's the mechanism? Well, if we go down, um, down to the bronchial tree, so wheezing is generally going to be heard from the second to seventh generation of bronchi. So we've got the trachea into the primary bronchi into the secondary. So from the secondary up to the seventh, this is where the wheezing is most likely to occur. So what happens is on the walls here, so you need to have an opposing wall. They, for, for whatever reason, through inflammation or some kind of um, parachymal change, it causes a change in the patency. And so when the air moves across, it causes a vibration in the wall. And so that is oscillation. Okay, so it oscillates and that causes the vibrating of sound. So if it's in the smaller airway, as I said, it's probably more likely to be on expiration. And so they, as they vibrate, that is causing the wheezing sound that you did hear. Now, as the obstruction worsen, the velocity of the sound increases, which increases the tone. And so this can change between whether it's a high pitched, like a high pitched whistle wheezing or a low pitched wheezing. And so when we think of high pitched wheezing, that's probably more associated with the smaller bronchia, such as with asthma. So that would be more in the kind of the terminal um, bronchi like so forth. 
whereas the lower pitched wheezing can be on, on the higher bronchi or the larger bronchi. Another thing to be aware of is whether the sound is monophasic or biphasic. So this means as you're hearing the, the wheeze over time, is the tone at the same or is it changing? So if it's monophasic, they suggest that it's more of a fixed obstruction. And this could be by um, a foreign body such a, or like a tumor. And so this would be a monophasic continuous sound over the time of the wheeze. Whereas if it's biphasic, it's changing, particularly as you auscultate through the lung field and it's changing in tone. This is suggestive of things like COPD and asthma. So the common conditions that will cause wheezing would be asthma, COPD, uh, respiratory infections, tumors, foreign bodies. So that finally, just with wheezing, uh, it doesn't necessarily suggest the severity of the respiratory um, illness or the respiratory dysfunction. So some very severe respiratory dysfunctions may not have a wheeze at all. Moving to the next abnormal sound, this is known as strider. Strider is a Latin term which means to creak. So it's a very loud, intense sound. It's monophasic and it's more commonly heard on inspiration. So let's have a quick listen to what strider sounds like. Now, as I said, it's more commonly on inspiration, so it's kind of in reverse to wheezing. They're both obstruction, but because the stride is more associated with the bigger airways, as I said, the, the bigger airways become smaller on inspiration and bigger on expiration and vice versa with the smaller airways, with what we saw with wheezing. So you're more likely to hear the, the, the strider sounds on the, the bigger airways, so extra thoracic airways, but we can categorize them into kind of three main areas. The area above the glottis, so this is the laryngeal or the supraglottis, the glottis itself or just under the vocal cords or more down in the trachea. So that's the three locations where strider can be heard. With above the vocal cords, so this is supraglottis or laryngeal, it's a louder sound and it's more heard on inspiration. Where when you think of the vocal cords, so the vocal cords are here, kind of behind the, um, the laryngeal the cartilages and carica cartilages below. Um, when you have a problem with the glottis and subglottis, this is probably more going to be heard, more likely to be heard on expiration. Okay, and that's going to be uh, probably a much higher pitch sound. Whereas if anything kind of in the trachea, so problems with the trachea so much lower down, it's going to be more likely to be biphasic, so inspiration, expiration, and it would probably be a, an intermediate sound in intensity. Some of the complications or some of the diseases or dysfunctions that will cause strider, common in infants because they've got a, a smaller airway to begin with, so when they get some respiratory infections that can lead to things like croup, that's a common cause of strider. Um, foreign bodies, so things being stuck along the way, aspiration, any kind of vocal cord dysfunction or epiglottitis is another cause of strider. Moving to the third abnormal breath sound, this abnormal breath sound is known as crackles. Now these are non-continuous unlike the other two. They're ex kind of like explosive popping that is more commonly on inspiration. Now they can be broken down into fine crackles which sometimes can be referred to as rails and coarse crackles which are um, sometimes called crepitations. So let's have a listen firstly of what crackling sounds both on a fine and a coarse. So let's start with fine. And now let's listen to some coarse crackles. Now before we go into the mechanism, there's two things I just want you to be aware of. When listening to a patient with crackles, be mindful of the timing. So we're going to talk in more of the space of inspiration because um, crackles are more likely to be associated with inspiration, although they can happen on expiration. But I'm going to focus on inspiration and the mechanism that causes it. So the timing and the pitch 
So whether it is on early, mid or late inspiration and whether it's a high pitched or a low pitched, which is going to be probably a fine crackle or a coarse crackle. So basically what happened is you've going to have, going down into your airway, smaller airways again, it's, it's going to be either associated with the small to medium bronchi or the alveoli. And so what essentially is happening, on expiration you lose the patency in those airways, so either the small or medium or the alveoles. Sometimes in this case you'll have fluid building up in the alveoles and you have the have a loss of the surfactant which keeps them open on expiration so they kind of close in. Or the, the smaller medium airways could have secretions narrowing such as with COPD and that causes them to come together and close. And so when the patient was, uh, ends their expiration, they will close up and you have that loss of patency. Now when they start to take a breath in, so they have this high insp inspiratory pressure, you have this rapid opening of these um, airways. And so the smaller to medium airways will probably open on early inspiration and they're going to be more of a coarse crackle, whereas the smaller airways like the alveoles, which has got the fluid down there, would open later. And so these are going to be more of a fine crackle and these are going to be more of a coarse crackle. And so let's have a, let's have a think now in terms of what are the, some of the conditions that may cause it. So when you have a fine late crackle, that is more likely to be associated with fibrosis. Okay, And so fibrosis is where you have an outside um, change in the parenchyma which changes in the compliance. So with the crackling um, it's more likely, the crackles are more likely to be heard at the start where the most patent or the most compliant and then the, the least compliant are the last ones to open up. Now with the fine crackles it's probably not going to clear with coughing unlike maybe more of the smaller medium airways with the coarse crackling which probably will clear or change with a cough. Other um, uh, other timing changes is going to be probably late, late to medium in timing and also with a fine is going to be with left um, sided heart failure or left ventricular heart failure. That would be also associated with the small airways where you have fluid going into the alveoles and that's going to cause the fine crackling and the, the crackling sounds will be associated in the late to medium phase. Uh, in terms of the course, this is probably going to be more common. So you could have um, an earlier phase. So earlier could be in things like bronchiectasis, where you have kind of dilation of the bronchioles, or COPD. So that's probably going to be more of a course crackle again. Now finally, before we leave the crackles, another thing just to be aware of, which I found was quite interesting, is the number of crackles. So if you were to hear the popping crackling sounds and it was one to four approximately, that would be more associated with um, COPD. Um, four to nine crackles would be more associated with left-sided heart failure and more than 14 would be associated with fibrosis. So that's the crackling. So now let's move across to the last abnormal breath sound. So this is the number four. This one is referred to as the pleural friction rub. Now this is thought to sound a bit like walking on fresh snow. So where the snow gets pushed down into the lower layers and you hear that kind of creaking, crackling, scratching sound. So let's have a listen to what a, a friction rub would sound like. Okay, so again, this can occur on inspiration and expiration or both, but it's probably more commonly on expiration. Now, the mechanism that's thought behind it, so remember, you've got your visceral pleura that goes around your lungs, so that's a continuous with the lung. Now, your chest wall has another pleural layer here like so. And so, in there, you have nice lubricating fluid. And so when you breathe in, breathe out, so as the wall goes out, the diaphragm goes down, 
pulls the per the parietal pleura down and the visceral will go with it and there is a degree of sliding which because of the fluid the lubricating fluid it's a nice frictional frictionless movement but in the pleural friction rub sound what happens is you essentially get inflammation in this layer so here which is essentially going to cause a grating movement as as you're breathing more associated with expiration and apparently it's more likely to be on the axilla so kind of under here or the basal layers or the basal lobe because that's the greater volume pressure loop with the expansion of the lung now what can cause this inflammation well it could be caused by both local or systemic effects so systemic effects so what could cause inflammation systemically well rheumatoid arthritis is one and also lupus so sle in terms of some localized effects well pleurisy is essentially a given also you may have certain forms of cancer so mesothelioma and maybe also a pulmonary embolism a pe can also cause an, a local inflammation change there one final thing just to be aware of um, it may be mixed up with so the heart sitting here so when you're auscultating the chest if there is pericardial rubs so a rub in the pericardium you might mistake that to be a pleural rub so the way to discriminate the two is the pericardial rub will be associated in three kind of sounds so you can have it in the systolic phase or the two, di two, two sounds in the diastole. So that could be when you would hear a pericardial rub. You won't hear a pericardial rub on breathing. So that's how you would discriminate between a pericardial and a pleural rub. So hopefully now you've got a better idea of the four abnormal breath sounds. So the wheezing, the crackling, the strider and the rub. Hopefully now you know what the definition is. You have heard what they sound like. So when you are now auscultating your patient's chest, you know what to listen out for. You know the mechanisms of what's causing it and some of the diseases or dysfunctions that can lead to it.